Okay. Roll All right. Hey, welcome everyone to Keystroke Medium. This is our Right Chef episode. Uh, I'm not sure which number we're on right now, but today we're, we're on eleven. Number eleven. Looking good. So we're going to talk today about the five things you should be doing as a writer to succeed, uh, or to ensure your writing success. Um, Everybody wants to know this stuff. Josh, before we get started, what's going on with you right now today? Well, I'll just tell you that the technical difficulties that seem to be a weekly, it's almost like a tradition yeah, for our show to have uh, technical difficulties. And this morning, well, actually last night, my uh, cable and internet went completely out. So I had to quickly come up with a solution and my solution is i saw the picture on instagram it was pretty classic yeah it's like it's basically i've taken these plastic oversized blocks that my kids play with at my parents house and set up a stand i noticed you got some stairs in the background so i do have stairs i'm in the basement uh, uh i'm actually standing in my father's office which is about the size of a closet. Yeah. And so I had to stand kind of in the doorway area. But, hey, we'll make it work. It's actually pretty good. I think you probably do all the shows there from now on. Oh, so. I probably will. I mean, I probably will. Why not? Yeah, why, why, not? why be comfortable? Well, you know, it's important to point out for the show that, you know, we do have technical difficulties every single week. But in this case, it was legitimately not our fault. Somebody apparently cut your the whole neighborhood. No, it's funny because uh, – it was fixed yeah. like it went it was it was bad it went down saturday and i called to have them come out and fix it they fixed it sunday afternoon and then it went down actually they fixed it saturday afternoon it went down again sunday night so My, what i want to know is how many other shows right now other internet shows and podcasts are being put on hold because an entire neighborhood probably has, none we're probably the only probably. ones okay so um, we're talking about well, it's been a while since we did our, our craft show. So I'm kind of looking forward to this one. It's actually been so long. We've done so many interviews, which has been awesome. We've had so many great writers with Chris Fox and uh, 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 Richard Fox and uh, Clark Chamberlain, and, uh, Ben Hale and all those people, yep. Ralph Kern. Yep. Um, who else have we had on? Jacob Cooper. Jacob Cooper was on. He was awesome. I keep seeing his stuff up. I'm getting ready to listen to his audio book. I just finished the uh... – I just finished the Osarian War, the Altar of Influence. His, uh, I guess it was. It's not really. Well, it's it's a prequel because he came out with Circle of Rain first, mm -hmm. and then he came out with this one second. But the timeline wise, Altar of Influence comes first. Yeah. Um, so I, it was a very good book. I'm gonna do a book review on it either this week or next week. Um, but we'll see after I listen to the Circle of Rain, which I have to start. Uh, listening to next week, we'll see whether it would have been better to read Circle of Rain and then go back and, and listen to right. Alter of Influence and just see maybe if there was a aha kind of thing. Yeah. You know, because sometimes you get that with prequels. You know what sometimes I mean? Sometimes you do. That's cool. And, yeah. Um, so so for that, I think that – oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, no, no. I was just saying it, it, it was a good book, great characters. Uh, I'm assuming that it's setting up some of the major events that mm -hmm. went on in Circle of Rain. Yeah. Um, and so it jumped a lot in the time. Like it starts out when these characters are kids and basically the whole story goes through major events in their lives until they become adults. And that's, I'm guessing is well, and actually they are the parents of whatever else. So anyway, I've said too much, but it was well, a great book. I'll review it, uh, next week. What's think, going on with you this week? Well, um, I'll get that. that what you're just telling me reminds me though, Jacob Cooper, he might be a good, a good, uh, talking point references show about how to succeed as a writer because he's done some things right obviously oh absolutely um, so for me uh basically my big thing is is i should be on track to finish um weapons of earth by the end of the month have it off the editor looking for a launch date in july uh, we've got some interest from my, my reading list about some advanced readers and uh a new book cover which i like a lot which i'll be i really about. like your book cover it's I so think much it's better than the other one so it encaps it encapsulates the story a lot yeah. better than the starship that you had on there. Yeah, earlier. the starship just it just didn't fit the story. Maybe for some other book. So, um, well, you want to get started? Yeah, uh, we'll do. Um, 
Today's show, like uh, Scott said, is the top five things to ensure riding success, or the top five things you should be doing to ensure riding success. Um, we talked about these this week, and we are um, in the process, obviously like everybody else that watches this show probably is, we're in the process of learning everything about indie riding. I've been doing it about two years, Scott's been doing it about three Um and we're still learning. I mean, this this career field and 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 uh, art form is always changing. It's always uh, new things are coming around that changes what you've done two months ago. Right. So it's a very fast moving field, and we've both been writing for a very long time. But as far as uh, doing the uh, the business aspect of it, only a few years. Right. 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 So. And and that's what we want to talk about today is a little bit of the business aspect of how to ensure that you're writing gets the most that you're getting the most out of your writing. So right. if you're just writing for fun and you just want to, you know, create a book that's just for you, or you don't even, you just want to write it and you don't even care if a thousand people write it, you read it. You just want to put it out maybe there. Wanna, that's maybe that's talk, great. Maybe you want to talk, talk at parties, get a conversation started. Or, right, right, right. Like I, I wrote a book one time. That's yeah. great. But uh, I, Scott and that's I, great. and I think uh, the majority of the people that, that watch our show, we're interested in making this uh, a full-time career. Right. Scott and I both have full-time jobs, and and I think the majority of the people that watch the show uh, have full-time jobs as well, at least part-time jobs. Some um, of us full-time jobs, and then some. And then some. And then some. So what we wanted to talk about today was five things that we've kind of seen over the last couple of years that if if you do these things, and, and we'll, we'll probably go more in-depth into each of these categories in later episodes. We just wanted to do a, a broad overview of these five things in this episode uh, just to get your kind of minds working, and then we'll talk about it uh, in later videos. So These are very, very important. So you want me to start with number five? Go ahead. And, uh, well, it's, it's number five on our list, but we think it's the number one thing that you can do as a writer to make your writing career better, and number one is go ahead, Scott. Number one in in the uh, in the true par paradox of, of writing all creative things on my list, I have this five, but we're going to start as number one. So connect with re connect with the right readers. Right. Um, I, I have a couple of notes on there that I want to talk about, but what when I say say uh, you walk up, we don't know each other, and you're like, hey, what should I do to be a successful writer? I say, well. First thing, Padawan, is you need to connect with the right readers. Exactly. Um, and it, it's kind of backwards because everybody thinks, and it's actually one, It's actually our last point, but everybody thinks, oh, I need to write to be a good, to, to, to be successful. I well, that's have, not true. I need to have an unusual idea. I need to have the idea that nobody's thought of and stuff, and that's right. what most people think of. Which, which, is, which, it, which is true, but if you don't have a reader base or you don't have a readership, then it doesn't matter how much you write. Right. Uh, you're not going to make a, a living. And even if you do write uh, a lot, if you don't connect with people, then um, you know they, they you're, you're just not going to sell your books. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a case in point. Um, I think one of the indie authors that I follow, he's very um, active on mm -hmm. Facebook and whatever other social media you can think about. Um, but he doesn't, he connects with his readers on a personal level. He's not out shouting about his books. And that's, right. I think that's the mistake that a lot of uh, authors make when they talk about marketing or, or, connecting with your reader connecting with your reader is not saying hey buy my book right. Connect, connecting with your reader is if they message about something on your wall then talk to them about it have a conversation you know? have some fun right and you know you you guys can interact on a on a friendship level more than a author writer level and if you can connect with people like that and they feel connected to you as a person, not just a writer, uh, they will be more inclined to read your books and then tell other people, hey, this guy, Scott, he's a phenomenal guy. He's really he's really nice. I've talked to him. It's it's pretty cool that he talks to me back because, you know, you know, some authors are recluses and they don't do anything right. but publish their works. He's yeah, a really nice guy. You need to check out his book. And then and word of mouth will do more for marketing than oh, yeah. 
than anything you've come up with. Word of mouth is the biggest marketing platform that you have, and you need to take advantage of that. That's where you're going to find your super fans. Right. And that's, and that's the thing. If you connect with your readers and, and, and build friendships and build relationships with them, maybe not friendships necessarily, but relationships would be a better mm -hmm. word. They will be your super fans. And if what's the, what's the number that you need to, there's a thing called a thousand true fans. It's yeah. a concept in marketing. And if you get a thousand true fans and basically a true fan is it's pretty much generally going to buy anything you put out there because they like what you write. And so when we talk about finding the people the right people or connect with the right readers we're talking about finding people who like what you write. Um, right. And that comes from one writing, writing your best work um, and being honest and open with right. when there and not trying to put up some sort of um, preconceived notion of what a writer is supposed to sound like or how they're supposed to act, answering exactly. emails, in, in, interacting, you know, on your social media. Although we talk later in another episode, about some dangers of too much social media. So yeah. number number this this point, connect with the right readers. Um, and that's and what they, we mean. What we mean by the right readers is um, readers that want to read your book. If you connect with, like, for instance, Scott and I write science fiction. If we connect with romance readers, that's not going to do anything for us, and it's not going to do anything for them. If you're a genre fiction writer, you want to connect with the readers that read your genre so mystery uh historical fiction that kind of stuff you need to go out there and and talk to the people and build relationships with the people that that read your fiction because it's not going to do you any good it's not going to do them any good if you write science fiction and horror and you're marketing to mm -hmm. a cozy mystery romance reader and they're actually, not going to want to read i actually made that mistake when i started publishing is a lot of the my i, I have a lot of good internet friends I've met over the last three or four years, and a lot of them are writers and or readers of romance. And you know, we we have some fun chats or tweets or whatever, um, but that's not really. I mean, it's that's fine, but it's not for the career of, of writing, and it's not it's not the right readers for what I what I have. And I even tried to promote through a couple of um, blog tours that were suggested by some of my social media friends yeah. and they were just really more geared towards either general writing or, or romance. And I had no results. So right. um, number four goes a little bit within to connect your connect uh, with the right readers. And that is build a platform. Yep. So as we, before we get started, I'll list just my bullet points here. I have website, maybe social media, live speaking engagements, video blogs and other things. So, yep. I say let's build a platform. Uh, what are your what's some ideas you have that could help some of our listeners? Uh, well, I mean we're doing it right now. Uh, we're building a platform for readers and and writers. We're doing it both, um, which I think is our that's our niche. niche. Like niche. a lot of uh, podcasts or YouTube channels, they uh, focus on either the writer and or the reader. Mm -hmm. We combine the two, um, but <clears throat> that's not necessarily the best thing for every writer to do. It's what we like to do. It's what we've decided to kind of produce and uh, a way to connect with other of our author friends and our readers. But for the average writer, that might not be the best thing. You know, a lot of people don't like talking on camera. Sure. A lot of people don't like putting their face out there, they just want to write their books or, or whatever. And that's fine. Right. Um, building a platform or a website there. I think that you absolutely need to have a website, whether it's a blog or a landing page or something, you need to have a website and you need to have a professional looking website. So it doesn't look like you just threw together a bulletin board from the 1990s. It can it's, be simple. It, and, and that's the thing, is there are so many things out there. You could do WordPress, um, which I'm not very familiar with because I use Weebly. And I Scott like uses Weebly. Weebly as well. Um, it's super easy. You don't have to be a, uh IT guru or a, a web design or anything like that. It helps. And you may want to try to get input from people before you do it. <laughs> um, but a simple site with a landing page and a spot where you can have a blog and and share your ideas and thoughts with your readers and a place where readers can contact you 
And you with know, most with Weebly and a lot of these sites, there's Blogger, um, WordPress, uh, Weebly. There's a whole bunch I saw recently, but they make it pretty easy. I mean, like for somebody that's never done this before, um, basically go to Weebly. They can do a free site. They can walk their way through it, and they can upgrade to a paid site where, and the difference is, is like if you look at Josh's banner, it says www.keystrokemean.com. Well, if that was not a professional site or a paid site, it would say dot keystrokemedium.weebly.com. Right. S some people care about that. Some people don't. But on like Weebly and most sites, you, when you open up a new page, it'll say open as a regular page or open as a blog. You click it as a blog, and then you just basically push the buttons. You type it in. There's a few glitches here and there, but definitely, I mean, if you're most people now are familiar with using a smartphone and a computer, um, I think most anybody can figure out how to do at least a basic web page. Yeah. Uh, it's not too cluttered that has your something about you, um, maybe a link to your books, a blog if you have it or something else so that when somebody searches for your name or your website, they don't just get nothing. Right. Exactly. It's, that's like a huge flag. Like this is not a real writer or is under right. some sort of crazy pen name. And you know, so right. you should definitely have a website. And now what about social media? Uh, well, I think it goes along with, uh, connecting with your readers to have a social media account. Um, I have Twitter, I have Instagram, I have Facebook. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't generally use Twitter. Uh, I used to use Twitter a lot. I, I like it because of the, the reach that you can have and the connectivity mm -hmm. that you can have with people. And, you know, I can at Stephen King and send Stephen King a message. Now, whether he reads that or responds to it, I don't know, but the availability is there. And the same abil availability to contact people is not the same on Facebook. Right. But I like Facebook a lot better than Twitter because it's, for me, it's a lot more organized. Um, I can, like, for instance, on Twitter, you you, you say something and then somebody at re replies to you, and then it's a big right. string. Right. But that's kind of, it's hard to follow. For me, it's hard to follow. My my problem was is the early days on Twitter, if you read books on how to succeed on Twitter, one of the things they suggested was follow everybody back. And people would have a hashtag follow back. I follow back. Yeah. And so you can easily get thousands and thousands of followers and follow thousands and thousands of people. Right. That's a lot of noise going down your stream. So I would recommend somebody new to Twitter to – follow people you actually want to communicate with or are very interested in. Um, yeah. And as much as I hate to say this, you know, I about three times a day I get a Twitter friendship request or get followed by um, <clears throat> some indie publishing group, you know, like we publish books, blah, blah, blah. And I always want to support them and be involved and I always follow them back. And then I never hear from them again. And right. now it's just noise in the background. Yeah. So, and that's the thing with, I think with Facebook, you can get a little bit more personal because, you can go in and look at people's pages and see what they're doing. And it's very simple and it's an orderly layout. Some people don't like Facebook. I like it, I like but it. you, although if, it is a huge time drain lately, oh, I've, yeah. I've, I've, uh, I've made some good progress. Like we talked about at the beginning of the show this week right. and largely it's because I just had to shut the Facebook off. And yeah. so Maybe in another episode, we have another episode we're talking about the three things you should avoid at all costs to be a successful writer, and social media abuse may be on that list. Just just maybe a spoiler or a hint about that episode, but <laughs> yeah. probably we're going to talk about that. Yeah, so basically for for social media when you're talking about building your platform, you, you, you want to have at least one, um, figure out which one you like, and then use that one. Um, but on the, on the same side, you, you, you don't want to go overboard with it. You don't want to spend two hours on Facebook thinking, I'm doing marketing. Well, no. you're not. You're, <laughs> you're not. We'll cover that in a later episode. But Very rarely. somehow yeah. get on social media, somehow connect with your readers through either through your website or your blog or through social media because you, people like to interact with the people. Yeah. That, I mean, I get emails from, from readers, which is fantastic. Um, but sometimes emails can get lost in the shuffle. If you've got a Facebook or, or Twitter, a lot of times it's a lot easier to contact with. Yeah, and some with of the, some of our shows, I know that we've contacted because um, you're real active and meet to a little bit of an extent on the Space Opera uh, Facebook right. page, Space Opera Writers. And um, 
which we have had some great uh, guests on our shows because of those connections who I'm just frankly still just kind of amazed. Well, and that's uh, the thing too with, 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 so. with Facebook versus Twitter with Facebook, you have, you know, groups and all this stuff and it's, it's easy to meet and interact with people and you're not selling your book. You're just interacting with people that like the same stuff that you do. And then, maybe they hear that you're a writer from somewhere else or, you know, you're in a group of writers and you can talk about different things and they they are interested in what you're talking about and they go read your stuff. So it goes back into connect with the right readers, being on the right Facebook page or right social media channels right. might, um, might be that, you know, if you're like in really into photography, maybe Pinterest or Instagram is where you need to be. Right. That's your thing. If you're not a writer per se. Absolutely. Um, next up is live speaking engagements. Now we didn't talk about this beforehand, but I've seen that as a good way to build. And basically for people that are not, I tend to forget that a lot of people coming new to indie writing haven't been obsessing over this for the last three years. And they might, because to you and me and most writers, when you say build your platform, everybody knows what that means. But I right. remember the first conference I went to, everybody's like, well, what do you mean by platform? And platform is just the way you're going to be able to be seen and contact other people. Yep. So a traditional way is live speaking engagements. When you go to a conference and that expert uh, writer or best-selling novelist gives a talk, they're, 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 they're sharing information, but they're also building their platform. Absolutely. And a lot of start, I don't think this is something that a lot of starting authors are going to be able to do. Uh, if they're trying to present now, if they're trying to, to go to the conference and, and listen to the people and build their context that way, then yes. Uh, a lot of, you know, that most of you know that Scott and I went to OWFI several months ago and met, uh, some very good writers, uh, made mm -hmm. some very good contacts. Um, but doing live speaking engagements where you're the speaker, um, that's probably going to come after you've had, uh, more success than just selling a few books. Right, you need some success, but there are a few things I think that you could do to set. If if you think you're somebody who's good at live speaking, maybe you do it for work or something like that, mm -hmm. um, or you just think that that's a calling. You could even if you're not an expert that maybe everyone wants to hear right now, you can still take some steps like um, you know you could take some public speaking classes. You could try to give some small presentations at work or for friends volunteer for some of the smaller um, conferences or groups or get togethers in your area and right. just work on your chops, you know, get your skills. Cause a good speaker really makes, makes all the difference. So, and that's a good, practice. that's a good point to roll into uh, the next thing under this is video. And if you're looking to do speaking engagements, you're going to want to prove yourself before they hire you. Like he was saying, get some smaller yeah. venues but the smaller venue could just be YouTube, right? You know, you get a camera and you get a microphone and you set up and you do a few videos a week, like we're trying to do and get, and get our, our, uh, company off the ground here, um, by doing a YouTube channel and a podcast. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something that you can look into. If you really want to do speaking engagements, do videos. There's a, uh, there's an indie author. Her name is Jenna Morosi and she mm -hmm. started a face, uh, Facebook, but a, a YouTube, channel where she talks about writing all the time and um she i watched her channel grow from a couple hundred viewers to i i'm not sure what she has now but i think it's in like the high five digits oh yeah or the mid it's five amazing. digits it's and amazing. but people like that stuff they <clears throat> that video gives you a more personal connection than right. Uh, writing and reading a blog on, on, a, on a website. If you if you do a video and then you connect with those people and you talk with them and you, you you're in the comments with them right. after the video, that is a, so much uh, a more personal experience than anything else. So I if you're looking at doing the, and, you know, yeah, yeah, because you know people want to listen to you. People want to know what you have to say and it, it, you know if you do a few videos and they they see that you kind of know what you're talking about or even that they enjoy how you talk about them. Jenna's kind of right. funny. She puts her little <laughs> uh jump cut funny things on there and you get yeah. a little haha -ha during the episode and then you move on and you, and you learn something for the most part. Uh, uh so if I if, think oh, go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say if if doing a speaking uh 
thing, if that's something that you're interested in, you start small, build your audience like you would anything else, and then go with that. I think, um, uh, just like you said, that's a, it's, and it's a great way to practice public speaking to a small audience. Right. You learn, you learn to not sit there and go, oh, uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, so you get to what am I talking practice. about? Right. Um, so, but what I was going to say is, is that, so what's the most searchable or what's the most searched engine or search engine out there right now? And everybody knows Google. Google. And most people know that YouTube and Amazon, I think, are, I don't remember the exact statistics, but I know they're definitely in the top five. I thought Google, it's been about two years I read a book on on Google, and it talked that Google was the second most searched browser there was. Right. So people need information. They are going to oftentimes just search Google because they want to fix a problem. Yep. And that's what uh, the YouTube videos are really good for fixing a problem. Although I've seen some entertainment channels and, you know, some, some indie film type things done that are actually kind of cool. Yeah. And well, and that's like the that. thing too, is YouTube is owned by Google. So not right. only do you have uh, something that's going to bring content to your viewers, YouTube is the number two search engine on the internet. Barring yeah, just searching through Google, but searching on YouTube is the number two engine. So uh, you can, you know, get your keywords right, get your your videos in a in a niche that gives people what they want and provides value to people. Then you're going to be golden, and that kind of goes right. in with the last part of blogs is that. Uh, you can use all that stuff on YouTube, live speaking engagements, video, blogging. You can put all that stuff on YouTube and people, once people get to know you, they value your opinion or you, you just, you're entertaining, mm -hmm. then that will become your platform and them searching for the tools, the, the topics that you're talking about, or um, just seeing that you put up a new video every couple of days that will build your viewership slash readership and um, your fan base will grow exponentially as it continues. Blogs are important because blog, you know, you're looking, if you're as a writer, talking to writers, you're trying to write. So you probably right. want people who like to read. So a blog is one way to prove yourself in 500 to a thousand words that you can write. And also a lot of people, I know I do this, I, I want something on YouTube, but I don't have a great data plan or Wi-Fi connection all the time. And so, but I can pull up the blog on my phone, read it any place and have it later Absolutely. when I have questions. So blogs are, are real, a really great thing. Um, so there's just a lot of opportunity in all these things. So building a platform is not as hard as it used to be. It used to be in order to build a platform, say, let's say 15, 20 years ago, you, you had to be either a best-selling writer uh, get pushed by a major indie or major uh, traditional publishing house, mm -hmm. which you know is you know definitely a crapshoot. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you know there's even back in the day they didn't you know the the books at the front of the bookstore are very expensive to place there. Where everybody else gets put on a on a uh, right. shelf someplace doesn't get seen. So um, you know where you could be famous, you know. And it wasn't easy to get famous like it is now, or you can be YouTube famous in about five seconds if something goes goes right. <laughs> yeah, for, <laughs> for the right or the wrong reasons. Right. Yeah. You can. You know, maybe you don't want to be that kind of YouTube famous, or maybe you do. I don't know. So that's good. Uh, so and those tie into again connecting with the right readers. You build yep. your platform that serves people that you know you have the same interests, um, and build your tribe. You know, is an often used phrase nowadays. So. Oh yeah. My, my personal favorite one and the one I probably spend the most on, which in a later episode we might talk about actually becoming a negative because anything positive can probably be negative. Yep. But the next thing we have, uh, number three coming down, five, four, three, number three is improve your craft. Yep. And uh, just a real quick overview, um, I put on there more writing, more reading, studying the graph, working with a mentor, and peer groups. So let's talk about some of those. Okay. Uh, I'll take... I'll take number two. I'll take B first because I think that's important. I think you're right. Um, becoming a good writer, and it doesn't it doesn't matter what genre you're writing in. If you mm -hmm. want to be a good writer, you have to read, and you have to read a lot. You can't just exactly. decide <clears throat> I'm going to be a writer and just start writing. I mean, you can, 
Um, but your stuff probably isn't going to be that very, it's, it's going to be, be that bad. good. When I meet people who are like, well, I don't really read, but I wanted to be a best selling writer. That makes me actually a little bit angry because that's somebody who's just trying to make money. Right. What they see is a market and they don't realize how hard it is to be a successful writer. Right. And that's like, I, <clears throat> I know you listen to audiobooks and read a lot. I also read a lot. I, whenever I'm in the car, I'm listening to an audio book. Uh, whenever I go to bed, I read for 15, 20 minutes every night, uh, you know, so seven days a week, I am either listening to or reading books. Um, and it doesn't matter what genre it is. I, I, matter of fact, I'm listening to a, uh, a children's book right now on my audible. It's, uh, it, it's called, uh, Mrs. Frisbee and the rats of Nim, which is, it turned into the movie, the secret of Nim, uh, it's great. It's a great book. It, oh, yeah. Fun movie too, but a, a great book. And uh, I mentioned I just listened to The Altar of Influence. Uh, I just pre-ordered Bloody Heroes, which is uh, Richard Fox's new book. And I've I, I've got tons of books on my Audible account that are not the same genre, but they're good books. And you have to do your research. I I don't know how much I've learned over the past couple of years just by listening to audiobooks. Right. Um. But just, just in how the pacing goes and how people talk and all that stuff, because it's different when you hear it than when you read it. Right. But I also read a lot. I just finished reading uh, Alloy of Law by Brandon Sanderson on my Kindle. Um, and uh, I started reading uh, Isaac Hook's book uh, Flagship on my Kindle. Right. And I just got that because I, my, my, I got my Kindle money back because of the Apple lawsuit or whatever. Nice. You got thirty four dollars. I'm like, oh yeah, boom, boom, boom. top five on the list, right <laughs> on my Kindle right now. Nice. I also like, I really like, and it's not always possible is when the Kindle and the audiobook sync up, so you can read yes. or you can listen, and you never lose your place. And right. man, I can tear through some books when, yeah, when okay. I have that option. That's pretty. That's fantastic. So um, I so, think reading is the number one thing. Uh, obviously, writing. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but studying the craft, uh, and this, this can go both ways. It can be a necessary thing, which it is, uh, but it also can be a hindrance, uh, mm -hmm. if you become too carried away in your research or, right. or in your studying of the craft. I own seven or eight, probably craft writing books. Scott, I'm sure has a whole handful I of them. I, if, if there's one that's been written, I probably have it. <laughs> but the thing Maybe is, I have it twice. I got some. I have. I have. I have one. I think in. I think I have on writing by Sol Stein in Kindle, paperback, and audiobook. Right. Mostly because it's one of the only ones I found that was available in audiobook. Yep. There are some good ones. I think we'll just without beating this to death. I think studying the craft is extremely important. Probably most people don't do it enough, but you don't need to. You don't want to become a professional student of the craft. Like, for example, you don't need to go get an MFA and right. write if you want to be a popular, commercially successful writer. Right. If you want to write literary stuff and teach in a university, yes, you need an MFA. Yep. And, you know, I would might have one, but it's not at the top of my list. Obviously. It's not in the cards right now. Yeah. So some of my favorite ones, and this is just off the top of my head, is Self-Editing for Fiction Writers by Remy and Brown. Yep. Very excellent to the point. A good book. There's one by um, called Writing. It's the uh, the Breakout Novel. Uh, oh, by, Writing the Breakout Novel, Donald Mass. Yeah, Writing the Breakout Donald Mass. But there's another one, Writing the Breakthrough Novel by, I think it's Albert Zuckerman. And that one is really good and it is available in audiobook. And what it does is it takes um, The Eye of the Needle by um, Ken Follett. It takes The um, the Godfather um, and okay. a couple of others. I thought it might have had the Diana Goldbaum, but maybe somebody else, another, another writer like that, and goes through their entire planning process from start to beginning and goes through like their detailed first outline. And then it goes why they changed it and how they, what they changed and needed to be changed is an extremely valuable resource um, and then there's several others I can get into in a, another another blog post we could probably link all those in the video description yeah. below uh, if you're interested in those I liked uh, write publish repeat by the uh, self publishing podcast guys <laughs> for sure uh, for business mm -hmm. um, but 
uh, I think uh, on writing Stephen King, everybody reads awesome. that book. Yeah. Uh, it's not necessarily a how-to book, but it is uh, educational and uh, entertaining, if nothing right. else. It should show, should probably be read. I, I think that on writing, self-editing for fiction writers, Remy and Brown, um, writing the breakout novel, um, and writing the breakout novel, the big message is, and this is before any publishing broke out, basically he said the secret to success is, guess what? Write the best book you can. And yep. that's the only way to succeed. So, And that doesn't mean write a book that's so perfect that you never get to release it because it can never be perfect. That means write the absolute best book that people are going to want to come back to. Absolutely. So moving along. Moving to, along. Let's just hit these next two real quick. Working with a mentor and peer groups. I think actually we can we can lump those into one and say you need to have people around you that are writers that can help you uh, and and coach you. Um, you and I we uh, trade manuscripts back and forth. We talk about our mm -hmm. our books. Um, Scott McGlasson, who uh, is working on a, a zombie military science fiction book, we, I've read his stuff. He takes a look at my stuff. Uh, we are both part of a uh, space opera writers group on Facebook. I'm actually a group in groups, several groups on Facebook that are writing specific groups. Um, the point is with that is don't just write your book and and edit it and send it out. You need to get, you need to get eyes on it. You need to have help. Everybody needs help. I mean, I Brandon know. Sanderson is in a writer, writer's group. So yeah. if Brandon can, Sanderson is, can, can do a writer's group and can take the time to get with people and say, Hey, read this and see what, tell me what you think. Then uh, you can do it. If Brandon can do it, you can do it is, is the point. Yeah. Everybody say um, hi, Garrett. Hi, Garrett, Vivian. Yep, they're off doing their thing, so they came home, which is awesome. Um, I think that the um, the peer groups falls very much in the same category as studying your craft. Yeah. Um, you can become a slave to your beta readers. You can spend way too much time um, doing that because ultimately you got to write the book. And I and I've I've had some I've been at some conferences where they talked about that you can be careful with with beta readers and maybe another show for that because right. that could be a whole show about how to find beta readers, what types of things you look for, um, but definitely a peer group because they can help you be a better writer. They can tell you that, hey, you know, this stuff that you're all upset about that you think sucks today because that's what writers do is actually really good, so keep going. Right. You know, Or maybe they can just say, dude, you really need to just stop. <laughs> yeah. I'm still waiting for that for that peer group. Well, but that goes along with our number two thing, and then we'll jump right into the the last thing. The number one. Which um, the number two thing is when you're talking about peer groups and working with them, and if you want to write a specific genre, don't get into the a group or a a. Uh, your kids are having a blast out yeah. there. Yeah, well, it's good. It's good that they are, I guess. So you can't pay for that type of background. You really, you really you know? can't. It's a little bit more. So uh, there's no fireworks or anything. Yeah, like that. Don't so, burn the house down, kids. Yeah, no, nothing crazy. But yeah, so when you're talking about peer groups and writing groups, you want to do it with the right people. You just don't want to uh, go off and grab somebody on the corner of the street and hey, hey, let's talk about my book and see what you think. Yeah. If you're writing science fiction, get with science fiction people and get with people who read science fiction. If you're writing mystery, get with people who write and read mystery. If, if you want to do a, a romance. Write a cozy romance, maybe hang right. out with your uh, erotica. Don't hang out with your erotica when you're talking one. about yeah. erotica. Yeah. Um, well, who knows? Maybe actually, I know, actually, I know more than a couple of erotica authors who did both her and her mom both write erotica oh very so, cool anyway, not 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 together in the same book or anything like that but like, right all right cool all right good uh yeah so, so you, you want to get people involved in your circle you want to have that kind of support but you want to make sure it's the right kind of support if you're sending off your uh it's easier to cross zombie novel right if you're sending off your zombie no zombie novel to a romance author they're going to read it and say oh there's blood and guts and cursing and yeah they might death I don't like this. This isn't any good, yeah, but or, it is good because a, you need a, to give it to the right reader. And on a more subtle level, you have to be careful because like if you're writing like 
um, you know, high speed action space opera science fiction, and you're cross promoting with a very technical hard science fiction crowd, mm -hmm. you know, hard science fiction is not going to necessarily leave you super great reviews on your Star Trek esque um, yeah. you know, space fantasy that you just right. wrote. Right. So, but those, so those things. And, and the number one reason I see for associate with people in your genre is that should be how you should be having fun. Absolutely. And I think the reason you can do this is to is because it's fun. It's more fun than a regular job most of the time. Oh, it is. It it definitely is. I love talking about my books. Uh, but what what what's great and and that's why I like this show so much is that I get excited when I talk to people. Uh, about their writing. When they get excited about their books, <laughs> I get excited about their books. We had Ben Hale on the show uh, four weeks ago. Yeah. And he gave a very inspirational talk. That interview was great, and it motivated me to keep writing. He doesn't oh, yeah. necessarily write in the same genre that I do, but uh, he was inspirational, and he made me excited about writing. Even though I love writing, he... Mm -hmm made me excited again to write it uh, we'll link that show in the description uh and then we'll even i'll even time stamp where you need to listen to to get <laughs> motivated to, to about writing that is definitely a classic yeah so um, the last one uh last but one. definitely not least so should we people can probably see this one coming <laughs> right you write. have to write you must write you have to write and everybody says if you want to be a writer you need to write which is kind of redundant i think uh people just say that and let it go uh but it's a lot more than that you need to write and you need to write well and you need to do it consistently consistently every i day. Uh, i've been writing i can remember sitting down and writing my first science fiction book when i was 13 years old mm -hmm. and i wrote it in a loose leaf notebook that was a one subject note no nope, notebook from school mm -hmm. and I read, I wrote a story from beginning to end and it was a horrible story <laughs> and uh, it was not, it was not good at all, uh, yeah. but I did it and yeah. no one will ever read it, but that's for me. I wish I could find mine. I have a similar story, similar age. Yeah. And, um, and some of the time I can't even read what I wrote. I'm oh, just yeah, kind of yeah. guessing like, what yeah. did I write there? Yeah, like, oh, my God. And, yeah, and I, I used to write those. I still have some of them around. I remember one was The Sword Peddler. Yeah. I, remember, I remember writing in these spiral bounds at, like, um, Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners. Because we'd be on trips, and I'd be, you know, visiting our extended family. Yep. I remember we went out to eat one time, and I'm I'm writing in this thing. and It was, was kind of crazy. But, you know, it was fun. And you know, I've been writing for a very long time, and I love to write. And that's the thing. You have to – you have to love to do it. If you're just getting into this business to make money, you're not doing it it's for the, the right wrong, reasons. It's absolutely the wrong place to come just to make money. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have kind of abused the the, the publishing uh, yeah. opportunities out there nowadays. But there's a, there's so many readers and so many writers because a lot of writers also read, obviously. And, um, you know, with work, if people treat it like – like a job, but also like art that, or a job they enjoy, then then it's I think it's a it's a great career, and that's definitely where I'm I'm trying to get to. Yeah, we talked about that on another episode that people are like, well, you, if you write that much, you're not writing good quality. But was it was it Asimov that wrote so much? There's oh, yeah. several writers that wrote hundreds of books. Yeah, back back before mm -hmm. publishing changed the first time, authors would write three or four or five books a year and and right. publish them, and people read them. And pe that's the thing is is uh, everybody thinks it takes three years to write a novel and that's not true. That's what, that's what the big five publishers tell you that that's what it takes. Michael, some Mo Michael Moorcock who wrote this uh, <clears throat> Stormbringer, Elker Melnabone. I don't know if you ever read those, mm -mm. but he, he's a, it's a huge fantasy one. He wrote them in the sixties. They're publishing magazines and he had a formula and his formula. Was, and I can't remember the whole thing. Um, there's a book called Write, Write Freely and Fearlessly. I have the link on one of my web pages. But it talks about this. And they were made to be written fast. And they're fantastic books. And eventually they got put together. But the point was is at that time in the 60s, if you wanted to make money, you wrote for magazines. And you got probably paid a couple hundred dollars for a novella, basically. Right. And so you better write a lot of them. Yep. And oh, yeah. And why not? And why not? I mean – 
why not write a lot? I mean, you have to write a lot to write well. Look at Stephen King. Look how many books that he's written. I mean, right. thousands of words a day. And that's the thing is if you if you just want to write, like we said at the beginning of the show, if you just want to write and have a hobby and have something that you uh, produce uh, every couple of days that you're just going to say, I'll write a couple hundred words this week, that's fine. Uh, many, 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 many people do that, and and I don't fault or think any less of people that write as a hobby that want or the people that write that want to do it as a business. Right. If you but, if you were going to be if you if you wanted to be a a your young uh, young man or woman and you want to be a professional athlete, say you want to be in the NFL, mm -hmm. and you're starting, and is any of your coaches going to say, you know, just come to practice when you feel like it, when you feel inspired, you should only do Squats and bench press when you feel the mood. That's right. You know, because that'll get you success. Amen, you know, brother. Amen. You know, or, or like if you're going to medical school. Well, you know, yeah. it's an eight-year program. Just kind of show up when just, you want just to. Just come whenever you want. It's not a big deal. Like, yeah, I, I, I like that. I, I like that analogy because if you want to be good at something, you have to do it well and you have to do it consistently. And you have to practice. All and the time. You may start out as a really crappy writer, mm -hmm. but you know what everybody does? Everybody sure. starts out as a really crappy writer, and you have to write that crap. You have to write the stuff that you're going to throw away. You have to spend – you don't have to spend, but you will spend years writing. And as you develop your craft and as you get better, you'll look mm -hmm. back on the stuff that you wrote when you first started with, that you thought was amazing and go, God, that was just mm -hmm. horrible. And, you, they're, they're and that's okay. Gems. It's they're okay to write gems too. You'll go back and say, I can't believe I wrote that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where it was coming. So, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. You're going to improve. And I wish I could go back and, and start over with everything um, sometimes, but so let's recap. I think we're getting pretty close to the yeah. end of, of this episode. Uh, so uh, before we cut off here, the so five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one. Number five is connecting with the right readers make sure that you're doing this you want to build your platform improve your craft associate with writers in your genre and most importantly write those are the five things that you can do to ensure success or or uh, better set yourself up to have success i think that you will be successful things. if you do those five things i think you will be successful Will you be the next J.K. Rowling's? You know, that's hard to say. That's maybe another could episode. Be. You could be, but you won't get there if you don't write. I bet you if we had an episode that was the five things you can do to ensure that you're J the next J.K. Rowling's, I bet you it would be a really, really popular episode. Yeah, so, but if it was us, one of those would involve a sex change, and I'm not doing that. <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh, so, all right. So um, I think maybe we wanted, I wanted originally to talk also about the three things you should avoid at all costs. So maybe that's another episode. What do you think? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let's do that on the next episode. We'll link that episode in the description. Um, if you're watching live, we are going to cut this feed and go right into the next one, which is the three things you should avoid at all costs if you're a writer. <laughs> yes. um, so avoid not coming back to this episode. You need to come back and that watch the next one. Thing. I promise you, you will never work again in this town if you right. don't watch the next episode. Yeah. So right. uh, for Scott Moon, I'm Josh Hayes. This has been The Right Stuff here at Keystroke Medium, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for stopping by. Later.